I was over at my boyfriend's apartment this weekend, and I was cooking dinner because he was studying for exams. So I made pasta and a chunky sauce with meatballs and veggies. So I told him dinner was ready, and he went, What's for dinner tonight, witch? With a lot of emphasis on the last word. I was fed up. I had a rough day with work, and I have some terrible associations with that word being used by other people in my life who were abusive. So I was so irritated that I dropped the pot of pasta sauce that I'd been carrying right on the ground and was like, well, nothing's for dinner tonight now, and I better not hear you using that word again. It's for the girls. He was freaking out about how the sauce had landed on his rug, and he even said, you're seriously acting like a witch right now. I don't know what else to call it. I just walked out, got takeout for myself, and went to my friend's house. She thought it was funny, but my boyfriend was furious. He kept texting and calling and sending me voice memos, trying to explain that saying what's for dinner tonight which was a TikTok trend, and that he was quoting something as a joke to put on TikTok. I thought that was the crappiest excuse ever. It doesn't matter if he saw it as a joke or stole the joke. It was still disrespectful, but it didn't change the fact that he thought that crap was funny to demean me when I tried to do him a favor. So why did I come over here when he was studying to make a home-cooked dinner and he decided it was time for jokes? So I put my phone on the do not disturb for the night and split a bottle of wine with my friends and her roommate. That the following day, he was sending me angry texts demanding that I clean his rug because he was too busy with exams to do it. I was shocked he left it overnight. That's disgusting. I texted him back saying, I yeah. So that's the witch text, honey. Leave me alone till you're ready to handle your cooking and cleaning because this witch isn't anymore. Actual, also it's vile you left that soaking in all night. He called me and told me that he was okay with doing his own household work, but I threw a full pot of sauce at the ground, so that's on me to clean up. I told him, yeah, no, I'm not comfortable doing chores for you if you see me like your witch. He told me he didn't and it was just a trend. And I got angry that he was playing that TikTok trend BS excuse again. And I told him, well, I'm starting a trend called saucing, where as a little joke, people throw pasta sauce around. You can't be mad because it's just a little trend, a little jokey joke, just a little prank, bro. He got really angry and hung up on me. And now I'm seriously wondering if this dumb TikTok joke will end things between us. Am I the idiot for how I reacted when my boyfriend asked me, what's for dinner tonight, witch? Not the idiot. But your got response, shock and rage at him taking you for granted, to the point of demeaning you was the right one from the beginning. His leaving the mess overnight and expecting you to come back and clean it up confirms that he doesn't respect you. Like seriously? He left the sauce on the floor overnight in his apartment for her to clean up. What's it going to be like if they stayed together? One day she gets home from work and the baby is set in his own crap all day. And he's like, oh, it's your baby. You had him. You changed his diaper. Or, oh, you left dishes in the sink after cooking. I'm not cleaning them up. 
I didn't make the mess. Exactly. Suppose it was just because of this stupid trend. He could have cleaned it up and sent you apologetic messages and asked for a chance to prove it was just momentary insanity and it wouldn't be repeated and that he would make it up to you. It's the nerve to call you a witch, period, but to do so while you're doing him a favor. I googled the trend and it's all about seeing how women react to a knowingly offensive comment and usually they're offended. These jokes aren't funny. Well, he reacted. He got his wish messed around and found out. He needs to grow up. So I young female teen have three younger sisters and then there are my parents. And whenever I try to watch a movie or show with them and ask one question, everybody gets mad and just tells me to watch. Sister, if I'm telling one of them something that I thought was important or interesting, they get irritated and tell me that I talk too much. Two of my sisters are Sarah, younger teen, and Judy, tween, while the youngest, Sophia, toddler. But just like if I try to tell my parents something after asking me about it, they don't listen to my response. And one of my sisters will say, you know that no one is listening to you, right? On or lake sports, they don't care, just stop. Or if I give my opinion on something, everybody tells me to just hush and that if I'm saying it, it doesn't matter. Just yesterday, Sarah asked me something and I said no and she continued to badger me about it. So I said no is a complete sentence and she didn't believe me and I tried to explain. We looked it up and I was right, and she got mad and told me to just shut up and at the same time. My mom didn't say anything until I said something. Recently, we were watching some show about dogs, and they showed a dog with cropped ears and a dock tail. So I said how I didn't like that, and how I didn't like flat-faced dogs either, and they all told me to be quiet that they didn't care and that I was just talking to hear my own voice. So I left the room and went to my room. I played my switch lead and was minding my business and my dad came in and asked why I had left. So I explained why and he got mad and told my mom, who then got mad at me and they both lectured me saying how family was important. So I explained to them why I don't spend that much time with them anymore and how what they say makes me feel a certain way and how when I tell them things, it means I just found out or just remember. And they don't want to forget because my memory sucks and that I just want to spend time with them and how they all gang up on me whenever I say anything. So am I the idiot? Thought the idiot. You're not a piece of furniture expected to sit there and not talk. If they also expect you to treat them as a family and spend time with them, they need to make a mutual effort to treat you like family. If they're not going to be respectful to you, then they don't deserve any of your time or respect. One of my children said to the other, You know, no one is listening to you, right? To the other kid. So we immediately addressed it and said that that's not how we talk to each other. It wasn't said again. The pure parents need to crack down on this behavior and encourage you to talk. Instead, what they're doing is pushing you away and that has consequences. I'm sorry that you have to live with their hurtful behavior. Is there an adult like a teacher or extended family member, librarian whom you trust and feel comfortable with? 
If so, talk to them about it. Most human beings need validation and support. This tip won't get you out of this situation, but it will help you to feel a little better and manage your feelings until you're old enough to go out on your own. Also, I think you need to get tested for ADHD and autism. Jesus, let's stop with the flying diagnosis. Why would Op through this little piece of text be characterized as someone on the spectrum or with ADHD? This is normal children's behavior. Oop is just a kid being a kid. She's just interacting and her family is a bunch of idiots. Ick for a little background information. I, 28 male, have a beautiful wife, 27. We've been trying for a baby for about three years now and have known each other since high school. But when my wife found out she was pregnant, we were thrilled and have been getting prepared for months now. She's nine months pregnant. My dad is a real idiot, but he keeps me employed. He owns a nice Italian restaurant my family has run for decades. I've worked there since I was about 15 and I'm now head chef. The problem is he treats his employees pretty bad, including me. And if you miss one shift, you get demoted or worse fired. I was in the middle of a very hectic shift on the busiest day of the week when my mother-in-law called, saying my wife had gone into labor and I needed to get to the hospital immediately. When I asked my dad if I could go, he said, you can go if you're okay with being unemployed, which I couldn't risk because after the baby was born. My wife would be off work for quite a while to be a stay-at-home mom. My dad was so mad at the idea of me leaving. He me leaving because he was understaffed and really needed my help. When I tried calling my mother-in-law, she wouldn't pick up, so I just kept working. And I thought I could explain myself later. Later, when it was time to go home, I drove to the hospital, but my mother-in-law and her sisters refused to let me in the room and called me names like a bad father and a bad husband. When it was finally time to leave the hospital, my wife and newborn son went home with my mother-in-law, and they hadn't spoken to me in days, even when I tried to apologize and explain myself. I thought I was doing the right thing, but I need to know. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. Here's a news flash. Lots of restaurants need staff. You should have gotten out from your father's thumb a long time ago, before it affected your wife and child. I'd say more, but I don't want to hold you up because you have a lot of groveling to do. A lot. Oh yeah, dad's already understaffed and will fire the head chef for leaving because his wife went into labor. So that's going to make him some money. The presence, my mother-in-law's probably saving his butt from getting set alight by the power of his wife's rage and hurt. Groveling? I'd be surprised if he isn't being served divorce papers. Up let her go through. Potentially the most traumatic experience of her life without him, so his dad wouldn't be upset with him. Like, okay, cool. She and baby are not your priority, even if it's a potentially life and death situation and you'd rather risk losing your wife than your job. Got it, loud and clear. Of course you are the idiot. The E.T. and the ORT. Why would you even ask? You had cards in your hand, son. You forgot to play them. You should have taken your knives and said, 
Good luck with never seeing your grandchild then, and disappeared into the night. You had all the aces. It's him facing his wife for saying that. Being the grandparents that won't see their grandbaby, you know all the recipes and how to follow them. You didn't play them because you were afraid. Getting one more saltimbaca out is not worth missing your child's birth forth. You did wrong. Today, my brother's fiance said, I'm only allowed to bring my ex-girlfriend to their wedding and I will no longer have a plus one because they don't want any strangers at their wedding unless it's her. I also must tell her by Thursday if my ex will be going too or else my ex can't go. I st my ex and I broke up four months ago and we've still been on and off but more on than off. So all I assume she'll be going with me to the wedding. Three months in advance is still unknown. I'm not very close with my brother and his fiance, but my other brother has told me horror stories. She was given a very large sum of money from both sets of parents, but is massively over budget. She's also invited about 100 too many people. She's also invited people hours after meeting them to her wedding. She has also said, I want to invite as many people as possible. Excessively invite as many people as possible so that we can get lots of gifts. Today she said that if my ex isn't attending, my plus one will be rescinded. I replied that it was my brother's wedding and that I could bring whoever I wanted. She then replied no, and that she didn't want any strangers at the wedding, and only people that were meaningful to her. At this point, I went off on her and said I knew that she had invited about 100 too many people and had also invited people after knowing them for an hour. So her argument of not wanting strangers is invalid. I also said my parents are paying for half her wedding and I'm paying thousands of my own dollars to attend their wedding and bachelor party. I told her I found it very hurtful that my plus one was being taken away because they invited too many people. Am I the idiot for telling her this? That's it, there are about 350 people going to this wedding. You are the idiot. Oh, what hundred dub am I tear? You don't have a random plus one. You have a partner who is invited. It's very common not to offer plus ones except to people in serious relationships. Hence, it's actually pretty generous of them to allow this on and off nonsense to count as a relationship and include your ex. You cannot bring whoever you want to your brother's wedding. You seem to have it confused with your wedding. At your opinions about the rest of the guest list are irrelevant. The rule is nobody they haven't met and she's met all those people even if you don't think it's for long enough. Not the idiot, but dude, you need to go to this wedding. It'll be a crapshoot, and you have front row seat. But play our little reindeer games. I mean, who cares? Tell her your ex is your plus one. If you're on the outs at wedding time, go alone or with someone else. Asked by arguing with her, you're just feeding into her bridezilla drama. Think about it. If you show up with a rando without telling her, you get to see the wicked witch melt. If you're with your ex, you both get to laugh at the drama. Either way, you win. Yes, enjoy the crap show because I'm guessing it's just the opening act. Her drama will not stop at the wedding. You will get to see and hear about it until the divorce. 
all other stuff aside, if she specifically wants your on again, off again X there, she should have put her name on the invite. X unless they're afraid you're bringing a literal clown as a plus one in a blank check, all the focus will be on them. You should be allowed to bring someone that is there for and with you. My husband and I in our late 20s recently had a baby. My husband's sister and her husband did too. There was some slight tension at the beginning of both of these pregnancies. Our family knew about our journey. Obviously, everything was planned in advance, so they knew when the pregnancy would begin. When my sister-in-law and brother-in-law announced their pregnancy about two weeks after we celebrated our successful embryo transplant, we were slightly annoyed. We kept this annoyance to ourselves to not rock the boat, and we knew it was irrational. Now that our children have been born, ours a boy, theirs a girl, we have two very different experiences. All my sister-in-law does is complain especially about the barrage of guests that have come to visit them now that they're home from the hospital. I understand she's recovering, but these guests aren't requesting extravagant home-cooked meals or 10 out of 10 hosting skills. They're coming over to spend time with the baby. In my experience, our guests have offered to do things for us to make life a little easier. For example, they see some dirty dishes in the sink and they'll load the dishwasher for us. They'll take out the trash, etc. But even if they didn't do this, I still love spending time with my husband's family. For context, these are not overbearing, demanding guests. At a little family gathering this weekend. I'm sure my sister-in-law will complain about later. I overheard that my husband's aunt and uncle were interested in dropping by their house for another visit soon. I saw the look on my sister-in-law's face, so I jumped in and said that sister-in-law was starting to feel a little overwhelmed with the visits, but that my husband and I would love to host them again. They agreed, hugged us for our generosity in opening our home to them, and moved on. My sister-in-law later pulled me aside and gave me an earful about how that wasn't my place to step in and that I made her look bad. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. She's recovering from pregnancy and childbirth. You cannot compare. You might have a newborn, but you have no idea what it's like to give birth. Fine. The baby is the easy part. The physical recovery is what is difficult. If you're not going to even bother to investigate what it's like to be a postpartum mom, which clearly you didn't because this information is easily accessible, you have no right to pass judgment on a woman who just gave birth. Shame on you. Seriously, also breastfeeding is no joke. Shame. So Albi and his husband would also be getting up every few hours to feed their newborn. But if sister-in-law is breastfeeding, that's a massive effort up simply ignoring. Sure, even with a bio mom, the partner can take over for a few nightly feeds, so the mother doesn't have to manage every feed. But that means she also needs to pump. Up, you had no right to jump in and speak for her. It was rude, especially when you don't seem close and you have no idea how she feels about visitors. The burden of visits is a lot more for her than you, and someone doing the dishes isn't going to help. It's great that you like them, but that doesn't make you better. 
you can cope with them better. Honestly, you sound jealous of her, and like you're making it into a competition. This 100 I suspect op is jealous as well, especially since he was annoyed. It's annoyed that they announced the pregnancy right after the embryo transfer for his baby. So instead of being happy, his baby will have a close in age cousin to grow up with, but he'll be mad that he didn't get all the attention.